Hello and welcome back to Living with Cambria. Also, welcome if you guys are new. So, I know last week I did the boys' bedroom. If you didn't see that, definitely go check out that video. Their room turned out amazing. This week we are working on baby girl's room. Um, I say baby girl. She's almost two, guys. Two. How does that happen? But I did split this one up, and that's because today... I'm going to show you the mural, which took a good two days to do, um, so I didn't want to put it all in one video. And then on Friday, I'm going to share the rest of the room transformation. Uh, the other reason I haven't completely done it is editing this video right now for Tuesday. It's currently Sunday. I still don't have all of her stuff. The rest of the stuff should come tomorrow, and I can finish her room. But I really hope you enjoy today's video, and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future uploads as well. What all my friends said still echoes in my head. We would make the cutest couple. I didn't know you were playing. So I'm not going to be doing a ton of voiceover in this video. Um, I feel like it's fairly self-explanatory with it being this mural and everything. I did freehand it all, um, which was very, very scary. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do this, but I think it turned out really, really good in the end. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you kind of get a sneak peek of what her theme is. Um, and this will obviously tell you a lot more of what the theme of her bedroom's going to be. And just like in our old house where I did a mural on the wall, I wanted to do one here as well. But I obviously wanted to do it a little bit different. And since she's still young enough, she doesn't have like big likes like the boys with their Roblox and video games and stuff like that. So as a mom, I get to have a little bit more creative freedom. Yes, you know. So one of the reasons I love doing this type of stuff for my kids is growing up, my mom always did stuff like this. So when I was a good bit younger, I don't even know what age, my mom painted Cinderella's castle on my room and my sister's room. We shared a room. Um, I actually shared a room till I was about 16 years old, um, which I bring that up because I've had people talk about the boys sharing a room um, at six and nine and I personally felt like I had a really really good relationship with my sister because we shared a room which is one of the reasons I love having the boys share a room um, I feel like it's more personal that way and the relationship that they grow because they do share a room is very special and you don't get that when you don't share a room um, so I, though, with my mom painting Cinderella Castle on our bedroom wall, like, it's just something I remember. I wish I had photos. Maybe I'm going to have to reach out. I don't think we have any photos of it. If I can find a photo of the mural my mom did growing up, I will definitely share it on the screen here. If you don't see it, I didn't find it. Um, but it's just something, it's a memory that I have of my past and just thinking how special it is that she took the time to decorate our rooms the way we wanted it and do that special mural. She also did uh, like 
pottery type stuff. I don't know exactly what it's called, but she had like all the little Disney figures that she painted for me growing up. So I really enjoy making their rooms really, really special so that hopefully when they grow up, they remember that um, mom didn't just love them. Mom enjoyed them and mom did anything and everything just to make their childhood special so that is why I really enjoy doing these projects in the kids rooms to give them those memories as they grow up looking for a reason driven by the heart fighting for a season with sadness for the So I will say originally my plan was to do a lot more um, with this mural. I wanted to do like mermaids and stuff like that, but with these walls being so textured, I quickly realized that doing detailed like work like that was not going to happen. I still love the way it turned out. Um, it's if you haven't figured out an underwater theme i don't know if i have that in the thumbnail and title yet because i haven't worked on that um but it's an underwater theme so i ended up going with things that are a little bit more fluent i do end up painting stuff on that's a little bit more detailed and that's when i was realizing that doing a full-on mermaid and actually having it look good wasn't going to happen um because things like underwater and the rocks that you have more grace with um and here in a second when you see me painting on the coral like it's very i don't want to say abstract but it's more flowy um so little minor mistakes aren't a big deal because it's about layers and flowing and things like that where when you're painting fish and mermaids there's a lot more detail to it so i really in my mind i was like "Ooh, i'll do a mermaid and a sea turtle and I, I had a very extravagant idea in my head that I still think it turned out really, really good, but not quite as extravagant as I originally planned. I will say though I had a lot of fun with painting the coral coral is a like I've never done it before but it's so flowy and different because it's underwater but and you also have like the wide range of colors and textures so just playing with it um it was it was a lot of fun to kind of play I did watch a couple videos of underwater like coral reefs and things like that just to give me some inspiration and ideas but this part of the painting I really enjoyed I felt like it was just very creative you just kind of did what you thought worked best and I could use such a huge variety of colors and like I said it was all about layering and different textures there's so many different types of coral that 
There was different shapes for everything. All the girls, they follow you around every day. What can I do to make you mine? Just look my way, I see you try, try to be cool, but it's not you. Like I said before, coral is very much just playing with a bunch of different shapes and sizes and colors. But the biggest thing I noticed with doing this for the first time is layering colors. I noticed the more layers I put on, the more it became more three-dimensional and not so flat. So one big thing I can recommend is adding more and more layers as you go. You know, it's like this seaweed right here and the one color just kind of looks very flat but as I layer on it just brings so much more dimension to all the plant life. Um, this is something that can be very therapeutic. I know a lot of people are afraid of paint but I always say it's it's just paint. Kind of like Bjorn with his fun hair. Some people don't get it but it's just hair. You can change it, you can cut it, you can paint over it like have some fun. Even if you don't know if you can do it, it's always worth at least trying. And the great thing is there's so many tutorials on YouTube. If there's something you're thinking about that you can look them up and watch a couple and get some inspiration. Um, I highly recommend just testing yourself. Like I said, I was very, very scared to do this project. Um, it was a much bigger scaled project than I've done in the past but I absolutely love the way it turned out in the end. Now, one thing I did not show is when I went in and did some of these more detailed, so the shark, the fish, things like that, I actually penciled it on the wall first because I knew these would be more detailed. And if I messed up, I wanted to mess up with pencil first and then fill in. Um, I could erase it off the wall. It's just a lot easier than with paint. Now, the sharks, I just kind of wanted to look like shadowy back figures, so I played with it. Um, but you'll hear, see here in a second that when something doesn't turn out exactly the way you want, blending it back in wasn't as easy, but it is still doable. So I was able to just kind of disguise it back into the water. I was trying to make this look like a shark that was turning, which I think would have been fine if it was in more color and detail, but with it being a shadow figure, I felt like it just kind of looked like a blob. Here you can see when it came to the fish, I kept Googling different pictures just so I had a better idea. I knew I wanted a clownfish and just a couple like iconic looking fish. 
Um, but doing it just off of memory, that, that I'm not as good about. So I just Googled it. I had it right on my phone. That way I could go in and add the details where needed. Um, I don't love the way these turned out. They're not bad, but it definitely would have been a lot easier on a flat surface. Getting those sharp, crisp lines was definitely a lot harder on this wall. But I still think it turned out really, really cute in the end. These little fish were definitely a lot easier. They gave you a lot more grace to play around with. Um, once again, it was less detail, so it made life a lot easier that way. But I'm glad I went in and did some of these more detailed because I think they really brought the whole mural together. I ended up adding an octopus in this top um, corner of the room purely because Bobby really, really wanted an octopus. He kept throwing out a lot of things that I was like, I don't know if I can freehand that. However, when he said octopus, I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure I can freehand an octopus. Um, so this ended up working to fill in the space where there was supposed to be a shark. And I actually really like the way the octopus turned out in the end. On this side of the mural, it's just taking a lot of the same ideas as the other side without copying it. Um, so some of that was different coloring, but a lot of the same like shapes and stuff, just in different ways of using it. I really enjoyed using the really bold pops of color. So the purples and the yellows and the blues, I felt looked like the best to really pop off these um, coral reefs. Um, if you were to say, but I do end up adding something on this side that I was very nervous about, but I think in the end turned out really, really cool, and you'll see that in just a second. So this was another thing that I didn't plan on doing right away, but I felt like this side needed something. So I did my hand at trying to make a stingray. I think it turned out really well. Um, I am definitely not a professional artist, so don't come at me if I'm doing this wrong. But I think in the end, this was just a nice little added feature to this side. Plus, like I said, I wanted it to be different match the other side but different than the other side so i figured a stingray a couple little fish and then some sharks as well would be a good complement without completely matching what i did on the other side
Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know this was pretty different than what I normally do, um, but I definitely wanted to give this a video of its own, even with this just being the mural. I had this sped up to the max speed that I can on my editing software, and it's still over 20 minutes. So I know it's not as long as my normal videos are, but I still hope you guys really enjoyed it it gave you some motivation some inspiration whatever it is but if you're new here make sure you like and subscribe uh friday we will have the rest of freya's bedroom makeover to share with you guys and i cannot wait but i will see you next time bye